Hello friends, in this video, let us discuss automatic generation controller. Your automatic generation controller, it's a system which adjusts the power output of interconnected generators in response to the changes in load demand. So we know that the real power demand and the reactive power demands are never steady and they will be continuously changing with a rising or falling trend. Now as this reactive power demand and real power demand changes, the frequency and voltage of the various bus systems will also change. So basically this AGC, we shall see the purpose of using the AGC, but the definition of AGC is a system which is used to adjust the power output of interconnected generators in response to the changes in load demand. So the purpose of using this AGC or you can say the requirement of the AGC is to ensure one is the frequency of various the frequency of various bus voltage and currents must be maintained at or near specified values and the second purpose is the tie line power flow tie line power flow i will tell you what is tie line so the tie line power, power flow among the interconnected areas must be maintained to a specified level so the tie line power flow among the interconnected areas must be maintained at specified levels and the third purpose is so the total power requirement the total power requirement on the whole system will be shared by the individual generators at an economically optimal fashion so this is the necessity of agc so agc ensures these three functions and the first two function will be carried by your low frequency control that is the frequency of various bus voltage and currents and the tie line power flow among the interconnected areas i will talk about this interconnected areas as well as the tie line power flow and the third function is the total power requirement on the whole system must be shared by the individual generators at an economically optimal fashion and this will be carried by your another regulator that is uh, another set of control you can say it is active power dispatch active power dispatch so we are not talking about this here so this is the purpose so the agc must ensure these three functions now we know that the reactive power demands and the steady that is a real power demands will be varying so as these demands will be varying the bus voltage and the frequency will also vary so what we can do is in order to adjust the real power demand so first i will talk about the real power demand so for the real power demand what we can do is we can uh, in order to match the real that is active power generation with the active power demand we can uh, adjust the steam input so your steam input to the turbo generators and uh, if i talk about the hydro generators then I, I should say water input so talking about the turbo generator the steam input to the turbo generator must be continuously regulated so that the real power generation will match the real power demand now when this real power generation will match the real power demand then your change in frequency will be equal to zero change in frequency will be equal to zero so this is also the case with the that is both both things to should satisfy that is uh, i am saying that is a real power demand and uh, real power generation then the frequency will be zero and if i talk about the reactive power so when your reactive power demand so i am talking about the reactive power demand so to match the reactive power generation with this reactive power demand what i can do is i can regulate the excitation controller or you can say i can regulate the machine excitation so excitation of the machine can be regulated so that the reactive power generation will match to the reactive power demand and at that juncture your change in voltage will be equal to zero so that means here you can see the frequency depends on the matching of the real power generation to the real power demand and the voltage depends on the matching of the uh, reactive power generation with the reactive power demand and uh, this can be noticed from this diagram so i'll talk about the parts uh, what are the uh, things we are using in this diagram so this is a schematic diagram of your load frequency controller and excitation voltage controller so before that 
if i talk about a modern a uh, large scale power system or you can say modern intercurrent power system for the proper management and control we are dividing that large scale modern intercurrent system into several control areas so for proper management and control i am dividing the large large scale power system into several control areas so let me say this is area 1 this is area 2 and this is area 3 this is area 4 and uh, what i am assuming here is all the generators in that control area so if i talk about this is a control area then all the generators in this control area they will swing in unison in response to the changes in load demand that means the generators in this control area will speed up at the same time and they will speed down at the same time maintaining their relative power angle same so that the frequency of the system will be maintained constant so as the generators are a forming a coherent group Co coherent group in the sense they will do everything at the same time all the generators will perform the same action at the same time that is coherent group so as the generators are coherent group then i will assume the, all the generators in a control area to be an equivalent generator so what i say is i will single equivalent generator i will assume all the generators to be a single equivalent generator because they are forming a coherent group and for this single equivalent generator i can assume it is having a equivalent inertia and equivalent damping constant that is representing a certain control area and these control areas are linked or interconnected through transmission lines so these control areas are interconnected through transmission lines and this transmission line will allow the flow of active power from one control area to another control area when the power is required that is flow of active power through its transmission lines and such transmission lines are named as your tie lines so the control areas are interconnected through the transmission lines which allow the flow of active power from one control area to another control area when the power is required and such transmission lines are called as tie lines and these tie lines basically performs three functions so one is the one function of tie line is it allows the local or pool exchange of power among the various control areas and the second thing is it allows a control area experiencing disturbance to draw help from another control area so it allows a control area experiencing disturbance to draw help from another control area and the third function is if this tie lines will provide a long distance transmission line uh, transmission links or you can say uh, this tie lines provide the transmission links so that you can carry the exchange of power on interstate or national basis so you can send the power from one region to another region that is from one state to another state and you can also send the power from one country to another country so that is transnational and you can also have interstate basis so this tie lines will provide a long transmission link for exchange of power so these are the three uses of this tie lines and here the other concept is the boundary of an area so the boundary Uh, let me say the electrical boundary of an area these are the points on the tie lines where the utilities membership and you can say laws of laws accounting and maintenance so i will say the three things so the boundary of an area represents the points on the tie line where the utilities ownership utilities ownership and other thing is maintenance maintenance and other thing is loss accounting ends and uh, insert his neighbors begin so the points on the tie lines where the utilities you know ownership maintenance and lock loss accounting ends and uh, immediately those of the neighbors begin so the neighboring control areas again ownership maintenance and the loss accounting begins so such an boundary is referred as the electrical boundary of a control area so this red color the uh, circle is your electrical boundary of a control area this is your electrical boundary of a 
control area. Now coming to this schematic diagram, so I will talk about the bars. First, I am having a this is your turbine, and your turbine is coupled to a generator. To this generator, and this is you are having the generator speed, and here I am having this is voltage. So you, you here you will get in a three phase power. So I am uh, taking the voltage from here and taking the frequency from here. So this is your frequency, or let me say this is the voltage sensor and comparator. Voltage sensor and comparator, and here here I am having the V reference. This is V reference, and I will say here this has F reference. And this is my frequency sensor, frequency sensor and comparator. Frequency sensor and comparator. Basically, this frequency sensor senses the frequency of the power. This voltage sensor senses the voltage of the power. And what we are having is we are having a comparator. So basically, comparator compares <coughs> these two frequencies. That is uh, F minus F reference. This is the comparison, and here the comparison is V minus V reference, and the difference is fed to your. Here you are having the steam valve controller. This is steam valve controller, and uh, here you can see this is the input steam, and here we are having the excitation controller. Excitation controller. So what are the difference? Between the V and V reference will be given to your excitation controller, and your excitation will co controller regulates the uh, machine excitation. So when it, uh, so this part is regulating your reactive power, and this part here you are having the frequency. Uh, there is a frequency sensor and comparator F minus F frequency will be fed back to your steam valve controller, and this steam valve controller opens or closes this steam valve such that the steam will flow to the turbine. So it is rotating at let me say omega. So this is basically how it is controlling, uh, how it is controlling the uh, real power generation, and how it is controlling the reactive power generation. And in the beginning, the controllers are set for some uh, particular operating conditions, and they'll take care of small load changes without changing the voltage and frequency beyond the uh, prescribed limits. So, but with increase in the load demand, the controllers must be reset manually or automatically. And as this control cannot be so what we are uh, doing is we are controlling the real power generation and the reactive power generation. And uh, in the modern interconnected large scale power system, it is not feasible to control uh, all these things manually. So that is why we are going for the automatic generation and excitation voltage controller. So that is why we have given the name automatic generation controller, or you can say uh, automatic generation and excitation voltage controller. So here. Uh, though this, uh, I'll say you are having the real power and uh, frequency that is PF loop and uh, QV loop. So though these loops are operating simultaneously, they do not interact with each other because uh, if you have seen the neutral Raphson method, so in the neutral Raphson method we are having the equations. So let me say this is delta P and this is delta Q. So this will be equal to your Jacobian matrix into. So this will be. Delta of delta and this will be delta of V. So from here you can see the real power. Uh, so the active power generation will be dependent on the machine angle and this will be independent of your bus voltage. Whereas the bus voltage will depend on the uh, machine excitation or the reactive power generation and it is independent of the machine angle. So as these are independent, likewise they are not no interactive. For this reason, and furthermore, you can add that uh, what we can say is so here the generator's fee. So the basically the time constant in the QV loop is generator field, and the time constant in the PF control loop is your turbine and generator. So as the QV loop generator field, or you can say the excitation voltage controller, uh, excitation voltage controller it is a fast acting. Fast acting control and your uh, what we can say load frequency control is a slow acting control. And where are the major time constants are? So, in this excitation voltage control, it is the generator field, and in this uh, power frequency control, it is turbine and generator's moment of inertia. Moment of inertia. So, as this is a fast acting and the time constant of the excitation voltage control is very small compared to the 
time constant of your load frequency controller that is why the dynamics of your excitation voltage controller doesn't affect the dynamics of your load frequency controller and for this reason you can analyze and model them independently both these controllers and here the load changes the identification of load changes can be done in two ways one is the slow varying load slow varying load changes around the mean and other one is the fast random variations around the mean fast random variations around the mean so the load variations can be slow varying in the mean and they or they can be fast random variations so but what you have to do what you have to do is you have to design your regulators to be insensitive to the fast random changes because it results once you uh, make them sensitive to the fast random changes it will result in the hunting so hunting basically uh, you can say the oscillations occurring uh, in the machine so this hunting will result in excessive wear and tear of the machine so that is why fast random changes for the fast random changes your regulators must be made insensitive and here uh, for the fast acting and the slow acting basically the transients transients of your excitation voltage controller transients or you can say the oscillations produced oscillations produced will vanish faster and they do not interact with the dynamics of this load frequency controller that is how they become uh, non interactive to each other because this is one reason with the time concentration and the other one reason is this so this is all about your automatic generation controller i hope you understood well please subscribe the channel thank you